going to give you some examples of how to write a successful R01 resubmission. I'm going to take you through some examples of resubmissions that we have done with clients to show you how we do that and so that you can take those general concepts and apply them as you are preparing your own resubmission. So I have some notes. I am just going to find them here. So, all right, so let's get started. Uh, but first of all, if you're new here, I'm going to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Dobson. I am a research grant consultant. I work primarily with early career researchers who are trying to get funded at NIH. And in our strategic grant review service, we work with PIs who have a previously scored R01, but that's not quite in that fundable range. And so when we work with them, we can take them uh, across the line, get them across the pay line uh, next time with the way that we approach our, uh, our review. We have a very thorough two round process that we take our clients through that help them get the scores they need to get their project funded. So I'm gonna go through three different examples of uh, work that we've done with clients to, um, to get them uh, a fundable score and explain how we did that. And you can of course take some of these concepts and apply them to your own resubmission. So client number one uh, came to us with critiques in their summary statement about innovation. So all three reviewers found that the proposed research wasn't particularly innovative. And so when we went through our resubmission strategy session with the client and we asked them uh, whether they agreed with that feedback, they actually did agree. They said, yeah, actually, there's nothing really groundbreaking that we're doing here, but that's because this area is so under-researched that we don't even have basic baseline evidence to, to build on and to innovate from. And so you might think that a lack of innovation is a fatal flaw in a, a grant application, right, in an R01. But it always, always, always comes down to justification. So if you can justify why this research might not be considered innovative by NIH standards, but still needs to be done, that argument may be compelling enough for you uh, to get your project funded, which is exactly what happened in this case with our PI. And that was at NCI, no less. So here's what we did. So instead of ignoring the lack of innovation or pretending that there's innovation that the reviewers had already pointed out and, and disagreed with that, they said there, this isn't really innovative. Instead of trying to shy away from that and pretend that it isn't real, we actually confronted that head on. So we stared that weakness right in the eye and we said, yeah, this is not innovative according to the sort of traditional NIH definition of innovation, but here's why this research still needs to be done. And so we said something along the lines of, although this project might not be innovative by traditional standards, the result of this research will advance the field by establishing X, Y, and Z. Therefore, uh, this project is both timely and essential, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that obviously wasn't the exact language that we used, but, we, but what I want you to notice about this is that we confronted that weakness and that critique directly. And kind of in the way that if you were having a conversation with a reviewer in person, you would say, yeah, I know what you're thinking, but here's why we're doing it this way, or here's why this is still important. And so we did that in writing. And not only did we uh, look at that in the innovation section and address it directly in the innovation section, we also beefed up the, the significance section, particularly when we were talking about the importance of the problem we also made sure uh, and made a much stronger, more logical argument in that section that, that made it obvious when you got to the innovation section that yes, in fact, this is really important and this is a huge problem that we do need to solve and here's, here's how we're going to solve it, even if we're not doing it in ways that appear to be innovative, right? So all of those uh, changes to the innovation argument in particular helped this grant go from the 33rd percentile to the 9th percentile. And of course, that 9th percentile uh, was enough to get this project funded at NCI. Okay, client number two. So client number two came to us with critiques in their summary statement relating to a lack of clarity 
in several different areas of their application. And reviewers agreed that the research had the potential to be highly impactful, but there was a lot of confusion around how the research team was actually gonna conduct the research and how the different parts of the projects were connected. So basically, like conceptually, the reviewers agreed that, yeah, these, these guys are onto something and we can see uh, we can see how this is a big problem that really does need to be solved, but the way that they're solving it is just not, it's just not going to work. Um, that was sort of the, the, in general, what the critique was for this particular uh, PI. Um, now, again, this may seem like it's an issue with the approach. And because our team, we're not subject matter experts, we can't really do anything about that, right? So what role could we possibly play uh, here in enhancing this, uh, this resubmission so that it gets a fundable score? But what's interesting here is that the research team didn't actually change very much at all about the experimental design. What we did was help the research team change how they described the project overall, and that is what made a huge difference. So. Oftentimes, a lack of clarity or detail in a grant application can uh, can be based just on a simple assumption that other people are, are seeing it the same way that you're seeing it or thinking the same way that you are. In other words, that your reviewers, you're assuming that reviewers can read your mind, right? Which they can't. <laughs> um, but it's, it's normal and it happens all the time that it it's just really difficult to take yourself out of the details of a project and examine it from an outsider's perspective, uh, from the perspective of someone who's reading your grant for the very first time. And that's where we come in and we can really help because we are reading your application for the first time and we are identifying areas that are unclear or are missing uh, logical steps or are making a lot of assumptions. And that is exactly what we did in this case with this PI and research team. So we pointed out where they were leaving out crucial details that reviewers were looking for and where they were going off on tangents that weren't actually relevant to the argument they were making for the significance of their research. And so by helping them identify those areas and helping them describe more clearly and logically and persuasively what their project actually was, that team was able to go from the 40th percentile to the second percentile. And that is definitely within the fundable range for their target institute. So of course their project was funded as well. All right, let's talk about client number three. So client number three actually came to us with a great score on their previous R1, which was enough to put them in the 21st percentile, which was so close to the pay line at their target institute, but not close enough. Uh, and the critiques, again, were mostly related to a lack of clarity and an overly ambitious set of aims. So for this grant, we spent a lot of time working on the specific aims page using our problem gap hook solution framework so that we could make a really memorable first impression and heighten the excitement around the research that our PI was proposing. And we also helped the PI write a really strong introduction to the resubmission. And what we helped them with was categorizing the responses so that they were able to address all of the critiques from their summary statement in a way that was organized and clear for the reviewers. Um, we also removed some unnecessary and confusing figures that were just kind of making things worse. Uh, we clarified a misunderstanding in the innovation section and we helped them create a more logical structure in the significant section. So they were really walking their reviewers through a clear and logical argument for why their research needs to be done, why they're the team to do it, and why their project is feasible. And when you are when you're so close like that, when you have a really good score and a really strong percentile, you might think that there's not a whole lot more you can do. Either the reviewers liked it or they didn't like it, and there isn't actually a lot that you can do to make a difference. But even with those small changes that we made with this PI, they were able to go from that 21st percentile to 11th percentile. And of course, that was enough at their Target Institute um, to, to get their project funded as well. So. Those are three different examples of three different clients that we worked with and the types of 
uh, advice and guidance and support that we provide to help them write a successful resubmission. And in almost all cases, there were very minor changes to the actual science of the application. And the bigger difference came around clarity and addressing objections and really making things more exciting and more uh, more justifiable for the reviewer. So really laying it out for them in a way that was clear and logical and persuasive. So if you found that helpful and you want to go deeper, there are two options for you. Number one is to sign up for our free resource library where you'll be able to watch our short 30-ish minute training on how to decipher your summary statement. So that is specific to resubmissions and helping you make sense of that summary statement and put together a plan for a resubmission. So that's option number one. If you are wanting to work with us on your resubmission to get your grant across the pay line, I invite you to apply for our strategic grant review service. Uh, and again, both of those links are in the video description and uh, we will see you next time.